Hi everyone, you're listening to the Bridgeway Podcast. The purpose of these podcasts is to give us the opportunity to share information and thoughts with you and to inspire all of you who work at Bridgeway. As ever, we'd love to hear from you, so if you've got any feedback, please get in touch. So, hi, I'm Lisa Brackner, HR Director, and today I'm catching up with Steve Dixon, our Corporate HSQE and Sustainability Director, to talk about a new initiative, What Safety Means to Me. Um, Steve, before we start, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I worked in rail for 44 years and I started on August the 14th, 1978 and did my induction at Crew as a messenger lad and then progressed into the print room at the Chief Mechanical and the Electrical Engineers over at Derby and then started looking at track diagrams. And, and unbeknown to me, I was talking to a P permanent way trainer at that time, asked him what these track diagrams were, and uh, he told me it was permanent way. And I was intrigued about what it was, and he said to me, a fit young man like you, you could be earning 100 pounds a week, why don't you get a transfer? So on the Thursday, I put in for a transfer at British Rail, got my transfer, and on the Monday morning, I was working on the permanent way, and that's how quick it was at British Rail. Uh, so I'd gone from messenger boy to print room to permanent way, and that was a big culture shock from going from a nice, warm, cosy environment, working out on track on the Monday on the Monday morning. And then that was 1980 when I worked on the track and finished was as I would say on the tools in 1991. So I spent 11 years as trackman, leading trackman, track chargeman and permanent way supervisor. Then by mistake fell into technical training. So did some technical training, plant training and eventually did some safety training and then British, uh, British Rail was privatised, um, became national training manager for Babel BT, national training manager for Jarvis and then in 1999 got approached by Rail Track to set the Sentinel system up um, which was a big thing for me because you know eight years before that I was still working on the tools yeah um, so then managed the Sentinel system just explain Sentinel just if Sentinel was was know. at the time a groundbreaking and still is a groundbreaking um, competence recording system for the whole of the the railways in the UK which records competencies personal personal information which was a big thing in 1999 because on the breakup of British Rail, um, the whole kind of central database of workers had just gone completely AWOL. So it was my job to pull it all back in, regulate the training providers, put a national competency recording system in place. And I've got to say, the legacy I've left, it's it's still working today in in pretty much the same kind of format, albeit a bit more kind of smarter with, with technology, technology and media. Yeah. Um, and then I left Network Rail in August 2008 and joined Bridgeway in 2008. You joined on the day I went on maternity leave. <laughs> did, yeah, I did, yeah. yeah, I remember that, I remember that. So for me, um, as far as my career, all good things happen in August. Um, so yeah, so a varied railway career. And just to finish off on my career, all my, all my family on my mum's side were all railway people. Yeah. My great granddad, my granddad, my aunties, my uncles, everybody worked on the railway in Derby. And I was going to be the only person in our family that didn't work on the railway. And then 44 years later, I'm working on the railway. <laughs> um, couldn't but my granddad it. did the most. My granddad did 48 years, so hopefully I'll, I'll just uh, pick my granddad. Um, so obviously, lots of experience, lots of experience on site. You predominantly work in the office now. I know you still go out on site yeah. and stuff, don't you? Do you miss being out there? I do miss being out there. I don't miss the cold. No. Because when people say you get used to being out there in the cold, I never did. Um, but the trick is you've got to keep keep mobile, keep walking. Around. But I do miss being out on site. But I think it's important that you you do in my position, and I suppose anybody in in the in Bridgeway, they need to understand if you're going to make policies and procedures and and safety interventions, you've got to understand what the conditions are and what the jobs are. So for me, it is it's really important about being out on site. But, but I'm going to say, safety is not just about being on site. It's yeah. about being in the office. It's about being in the car park. It's about being yeah. in the stores. It's a, it's a whole immersive thing that, you know, whatever we do, whatever job you do at Bridgeway, 
it's, it's got to be safe. Yeah, I think that is important because I suppose from my side of it, being in the office quite a lot and other people that like me, they don't. They, it's almost like you don't see it as a safety thing, but actually it does really link up to what we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Um, so about your role at Bridgeway, apart from having the longest job title of all of us directors, <laughs> um, just explain a little bit about what you do sort of on a daily basis. Um, well, I lead the health, safety, quality and environmental team. I also get involved in a few projects like remote control TCODs, the S&T team and the P-Way team. But predominantly, you know, I, it's my job and my team's job to help keep the business viable, keep them safe. Um, because there's one thing for sure in the rail industry, you can be a very productive in, uh, you can be a very productive company, but if you're not safe, you're not going to be asked to, to go back and work. So, I think you know our whole ethos of the three E's, exceeding expectations everywhere, safely and sustainably, is really really important because you can exceed expectations, but if you're cutting corners, you're not doing yeah. safely, you're not doing sustainably, you, you certainly haven't got a future in the, in rail or highways. So. Um I know obviously that safety is at the heart of everything that we do but how do we ensure that that message gets across to the wider business? Well I think everybody's first steps at Bridgeway I think is is a really big one because you know some of them may have come from unregulated industries they're coming into a highly regulated industry and predominantly rail and that, that message has to start with our inductions so when we look at our induction program which I think has really improved over the years and I think it's a great collaborative effort between um, my own team, the HR team, the fleet team, business support team. It's a great first step, but for me, that safety message and the health and safety message starts at induction in making sure they understand what's expected of them, uh, the PPE that's required, and also the empowerment they've got if, if they deem that something's not quite safe or doesn't look safe. Um, so it's that key message in basically saying, Look, if it doesn't look right, it doesn't smell right, it yeah. doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. Yeah. And professionally, you've, you've got to be able to say, stop yeah. and have a discussion. Um, so obviously you've been at Bridgeway nearly 14 years now. Um, how have things developed over that time and changed whilst you've been at Bridgeway? Um, well, it's, it's fair to say I inherited a really good safety management system from my predecessor, which was Richard Bartrock. So Richard, for me, Put together the foundations and really good building blocks of, of an incredible health and safety management system but things have changed and you know the safety meetings have changed the structure has changed inductions have changed town hall briefings have changed we do town hall briefings now we the safety team go into team meetings and deliver 343s 343 has always been a staple since i've been here and and it's a good way of getting the message across the town hall briefs for me are a great great way of having interaction between the HQ staff and and frontline workers um, we've got safety champions in each department now who are really important in conveying safety messages and taking ownership of health and safety in their department as well we've got close calls um, you know we've got a good record on close calls and raising close calls and closing close calls and more importantly the quality of close calls so I think the overarching collaboration we've got in the business now is is, is, is never perfect um, it's better and, and it could be even better um, but I think the culture we've got as far as engagement and as far as communications I think is is, is spot on and do you think that um, those developments at Bridgeway and the improvements that we've made reflect those that are in the wider rail industry as well Yes, I do. Um, and both myself, Pino, and people like Mike, and, and lots of other people, a lot of directors, and associate directors, and delivery managers get involved with what, what they call industry stakeholder groups. And in some ways, Bridgeway becomes the voice of reason uh, as far as an SME within rail and a principal contractor. Um, and more often than not, the first port of call is from Network Rail or RSSB or even sometimes the ORR is let's invite Bridgeway to see what they think yeah and sometimes it you know it gives it that tick in the box as far as whether it's a good thing to do a bad thing to do or or maybe it needs some modification I mean a great example of that was you know the life-saving rules we so we all saw the draft of the life-saving rules years ago uh, and we were asked to comment on it and you know we had a discussion as a as a leadership team at that time and we influenced the wording of the life-saving rules and you know, on a regular basis, both myself, Pino, and lots of others get invited 
to lots of stakeholder groups. And I always say on those kind of things, it's always good to be involved rather than being done to. Yeah. Um, so obviously why we're here today is to talk about this new initiative that your team's launching called What Safety Means to Me. So can you just explain the background to that for me? Yeah, it's it's something that I saw on, on another forum actually and I was really impressed with it because it's it's a message that basically says it's safety is very, very personal because I've, we've got a safety team at Reg Way and we all work safely but it does become very personal and and for me sometimes there's no right and wrong answers what safety means to people as long as they're doing it right um, but it's also making sure that people have got personal ownership and responsibility rather than just me rolling out the corporate the corporate line as far as what I think it should be and I think it's also giving people the chance to view their personal opinions about what safety should be and what it should look like but more importantly it's about that ownership yeah. and it's personal ownership of, of what it means to yeah. them because what it means to them affects how the effects it has on others as well. Yeah, and everyone's got their part to play in it, haven't they? Um, how much do you feel sort of physical and mental health can have an impact on people's safety at work? Uh, well, I've worked, I've worked in rail, as I said, for 44 years, and, and I think if we spoke about physical well-being, then it was people with bad backs, mm. and you know, people were given slightly different jobs to compensate for physical ailments and stuff like that but mental well-being and and even physical well-being can have a massive effect and I think we've we've learned to understand that a lot more I'm going to say probably over the last 10 to 15 yeah. years because you know somebody being mentally not in the right frame of mind doing a safety critical job in what is a life-threatening environment is is you know it's a it's a dangerous thing so we need to make sure that people's minds are 100% on the job and and I'd like people to come and talk to us that if there are things you know happening in their personal life I'd like them to come and talk to us because we can manage the process we've got something called the safety net register at Bridgeway uh, where we can manage um, work activities of the individual where you know maybe there's less thinking about what's got to be done because of the emotional or mental well-being state of the person and and the safety net is not a bad thing it's a good thing for it somebody to say. It is what it says, say. isn't it? It is yeah, a safety it's net. It's a safety for somebody. net. It's yeah. not. It's not something that we're going to think badly of somebody if, if they say they've got something going wrong in their life or they've got financial problems or or whatever other problems. I'd like to come talk to us, but but we had an incident. Um, it was probably about twelve years ago now. This is the first time I ever saw it, really, as come to the fore. We had a an, a possession guy actually. That had a really great productive record, great safety record, and he had a possession irregularity on the Monday. Quite a simple, innocuous possession irregularity. We did what we did, we discussed it, we did a report, it went back to, at the time, Network Rail, everything was signed off, and then lo and behold, two days later, he had another possession irregularity. Yeah. And the report was done, and we, we sat the individual down, and at that stage, um, the individual, spoke to us at length and said that he was worried because he'd been tests for test for testicular cancer yeah. and obviously he was awaiting the results so when you look start to look at that there was an individual that was worried about his, his health yeah and it had an effect on what he did mm. um but did we think badly of the individual no no we didn't you know it was but it, it drummed down the fact to me that external factors like that can have an effect on what you do and how you do it at work yeah yeah and it's it's that thing isn't it sometimes it's just talking about it it just lifts that weight and it gets it off your mind so that you are focused on the job doesn't it yeah and just just lastly on that as well you know we we work in a male dominated environment in rail yeah and you know we're encouraging lots more women to to come and work in rail but the problem with men in rail is if they've got problems like that and and maybe i'm a you know culprit of this Men don't like to talk about that kind of no. stuff, so I think we need to maybe put the message out there to say to, to men, look, you know, it's good to talk about this kind of yeah. stuff because it will have an effect on on what you do at work. I think women can be a bit more open, can't they, yeah. in terms of yeah. they just come in and say I'm having a bad day or whatever, yeah. whereas men, men just see keep that it to as themselves, a, as a, a bit, of, bit a of a weakness. Yeah. Um, so you obviously carry out the majority of our HSQE inductions for our new starters and so we get that safety message out to our employees right from the start um, but as a reminder to everyone what final message would you give work safely 
uh, work productively, um, be 100%, you stop work if, it, if you don't feel as though it's safe, you have a professional and sensible discussion, um, you call the on-call manager, you can raise it with the insurance team, uh, they can raise it with me, but, but most importantly, it's just making sure that they know, people know where to go at Bridgeway if there's a problem. And you know, the railway is an unforgiving place. And you know, my 44 years, I've known lots of friends and I've known people that are no longer here to live to tell the tale. Mm. And you know, I've worked in a very different life at British Rail. And for anybody that says, you know, it was all great, it, it wasn't, it was, it was great fun. It was great for my career, yeah. but from a safety point of view, it, it wasn't brilliant. And you know, um, said before, the railways are really unforgiving place for, you know, a minor error going wrong could be, you know, the, the last error somebody makes. So for me, the final message to everybody is work productively. But if it ain't safe, then you don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. So finally, obviously, we're here to talk about what safety means to you. So what does it mean to you, Steve? Well, I put my own message out, and and I put my own little caption and it means the right person doing the right thing at the right time with the right PPE and the right equipment even when no one's watching yeah and that's what safety means to me and if you do all of that that will ensure that everybody gets home well and safe yeah okay thank you so thanks for your time today obviously really appreciate it thanks to everybody for listening um, and obviously look out for more on our safety campaign, What Safety Means to Me.